let me show you how I automated 100% of my social media content posting to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and more using a super cool tool that I'm gonna show you in this video. What's up, my name's Kirk. I build really cool automations. I run a school community called Digital Automation Diagram. I've built over 500 workflow automations. So let me show you what I've got going on in my school community. In my classroom section, I have a ton of resources in here. You can check out all my templates and tutorials in the classroom. I also have a section on creating your AI avatar. If you want to create your own AI avatar like I've done for myself, my avatar is named Isla and she can run parts of my entire social media system I've got going on. She can create, edit, and post her own social media videos to all of my channels. So I show you how to generate the AI in these sections and also set up the workflows you need. You can check that out. What we're gonna be talking about today is the social media automation section. We're gonna be diving in there so I can show you my latest automation, content, posting, and scheduling. By the way, I've got the link to my school community in the description of this video. Check it out down below. All right, let's jump right into it. Here it is. This is is the automation that will post to all of my social accounts, the one I have set up on this particular automation. I can post to YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and X. Cool, so let's jump into how this one actually works. If you're new to NADN, follow along for some basics here. This workflow is set up with two different trigger nodes. I'll flip this one back on. You can see I have a schedule trigger and a webhook trigger. So let's talk about this automation route for now, and we'll come back to this one in a second. So starting with the trigger node, the trigger in an N8N workflow is going to be the first node, the one that kicks everything off, the one that actually starts your workflow. So anytime you're building workflows in N8N, you'll have to have some kind of trigger node, some kind of interaction that's going to kick off the entire automation chain. All right, so in this case, this first schedule trigger, if I double click onto that, we can say I have this one set to every two days, at 3.30 p.m. this one will trigger. That means every two days at 3.30 p.m. this will activate and kick off my entire workflow automation. So this is going to be the scheduling node you can set on when you want to post to your social media. Cool, moving on down the chain, the next one is gonna be this code node. Now don't let code nodes scare you in N8N. Anytime I need to write a code node, I just have ChatGPT write it for me. In this particular case, what this one is doing is generating a random number of minutes between one and 75 minutes. So I just had ChatGPT say, write me a code node for N8N. I want to generate a random number of minutes between one and 75 minutes. And it wrote the code for me, right? I just copy and paste into this code node. So the reason I'm generating those random minutes is because in this wait node, I'm setting that output. So whatever number of minutes get generated, I'm setting this wait node to wait that number of minutes from one to 75 minutes. So what this is doing right here, this section is saying, okay, trigger every two days, at 3.30 p.m., then generate a random number of minutes from one to 75 minutes and add a wait time. So essentially, if 30 minutes was generated inside of this node, we're actually gonna be posting at four o'clock. So the reason that is important when you're automating posts to social media is just to give a little bit more humanization in the posting, right? If you're posting at exactly the same time every single day, like clockwork, Instagram especially is probably gonna start to wonder if it's clockwork, if it's an automation. So we need to add that little bit of randomization into your posting schedule, just to make sure that we are acting human, so to speak. So once we pass the wait node, we're going to search records in Airtable. So this is gonna search all of my records in my Airtable base that are ready to publish. Again, if you guys want to see a full build out of this entire workflow and my entire system, comment down below saying you wanna see the entire step-by-step -step workflow. I can show you all this stuff in much greater detail. You can always 
feel free to join my school community and we can work one on one if you want to learn how to do this stuff. So what this is going to do is search all of my records in my Airtable base. So this is my master content management system over here. I have a bunch of workflows where I can create content where Isla can create her content and I can see what she's actually doing while she's doing it. By the way, for those of you new to my channel, I have created an AI assistant named Isla. She can actually run my social media channel. She can create edit and post her own social media videos. So I'm keeping track of all that stuff in here. But the table that we're concerned with is the publish table. Very simple. If you go to build something like this in Airtable or you even go to build something like this in Google Sheets, we're going to need one table where we can list all of the media files, all of your content ready to post. So these are my actual media files right here, my actual videos ready to post. These are the captions that will get posted. We can see the status and the platforms that these pieces of content will get published to. These you can see without an avatar name. These are the ones that I've made my videos and the ones with the avatar name. These are the ones that Isla has made and scheduled to be posted by herself inside of the system. So back in N8N, this node is going to search all of my records in my publish table. It's gonna find all of these records. Then the next node is to limit the number of records. So if I double click into here, we're keeping that limit at one. That way, all the records will get found, but only one of them will pass to get published on that scheduled trigger. This solution right here is by far the easiest, most elegant solution to choosing which records get published on a schedule. I've built a lot of these workflow automations and just finding all of your records that are ready to publish and limiting the number that get published is the easiest way to accomplish that rather than trying to find a specific record and then maybe that specific record gets overlooked and then that piece of content doesn't actually get posted, all kinds of problems can pop up if you don't actually search for all your records and then limit which one is getting posted. The way I finish off this solution here is setting the status of that record to published in the next step. So on this Airtable node right here, all we're doing is setting the status of that record to published. So we can see back in my table, this status will get set to published instead of in published queue. And if we go to my published records view over here, we can see a list of all of my published content, everything that has gone through and published. So it will pop out of this list right here and pop into this list right here. That way, when I go to publish a new record, we're not double publishing anything. It's getting only the records that are in the published queue and none of the published records. Okay, don't worry if that doesn't make sense. If you're new to this stuff, I teach you everything in the school community. I've got step-by-step -step workflows up in there if you wanna check it out. Of course, you can always book one-on-one -on -one calls with me. Once you join the community, we can work on anything you want step-by-step from scratch. So now that we're in this node here, let's take a look at the second route or the first route up here to trigger the workflow. Webhooks, okay? If you don't know what webhooks are, the basic understanding here is a webhook is a URL. The very basic thing you need to know about webhooks is that it's simply a URL. If I copy this URL, come into a new window and paste that URL. If I hit enter on the keyboard, we can see what happens. This is gonna say not registered, something like that. It's gonna give me an error because I have the test URL that I just copied. And when I went to paste it, it's telling me, well, that's a test URL and I can't do anything with that. But you can see what happens here. The URL is giving us a message saying the workflow has been executed, or in this case, has not been executed. That means you can take your webhook, take that URL and paste it anywhere you want to click on as a link. If someone clicks on that link or you click on that link, it will trigger your webhook in N8N and kick off your entire automation. So that is the very basics with webhooks. It's a URL, you click that URL and it's going to trigger your entire workflow. 
I have a second webhook in here, the response to the webhook. Now this one is just simply closing down a window. This one's a little bit more advanced, but when you use a button in Airtable to trigger a webhook, it's gonna open up a new browser window, just like we did over here. It's gonna open a new browser window and this node is gonna run this very simple script to actually immediately close that browser window. Okay, so don't need to know about this one. This is just my little trick to keeping my browser tabs to a minimum when I'm triggering webhooks. And that is specifically because I'm using a publish button in Airtable. Don't have to know the specifics here, but I have a button here. And when I click that button, you can see exactly what's happening. When I click that button, it's actually just clicking this link right here, the link to my webhook. What it's also doing is sending my record ID. It's sending which record I actually clicked the button on so it knows which media to grab in the next step. So I'll show you that one next. That's exactly what's happening here. I'm clicking the button. It's telling which record is being clicked on and it's getting that record from Airtable right here. So that record will come through the webhook, pop in here, Airtable will grab that record, get the record ID and same thing down here. We set that one to published whatever record I click the button on, that will get set to published immediately. That will pop out of this list and it will continue down the chain to be posted to my social media. So now we're here in this node. This is the magic right here. This is the special tool that will get all of this stuff done for you. I have the link to this tool if you wanna check it out. I have the link in the description of this video. Definitely check it out. Let's hop over there real quick. And here I am, I'm over here in the published posts section. You can see all of the posts that actually went through this tool and published to each of these platforms, all automatically, all on that schedule. We can see the schedule timer over here when that's actually posting. If I come into my settings, you can see all of the accounts that you can link up and post to using this tool. So we have Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, Pinterest, Blue Sky, and YouTube. Once you log into all these accounts right here, you'll be able to post to them using this tool. These are the accounts that I have connected currently. These are the ones that are connected up in my edit in workflow here. That is what I've got going on over here. Now, when you set this one up, you're gonna create back in N8N, an HTTP request node. If you're self-hosting N8N, I know there are some community nodes, some built-in community nodes you can use, but if you're not self-hosting, an HTTP node will do exactly the same thing. In fact, a little bit better in my opinion, just because you have so much more granular control over everything that's going on in an HTTP node. But in this node, it's simply uploading all of the media to the internal database for the tool, then passing it down and choosing which platform the content will get posted to. So you can see in this node here, the edit fields node coming from the HTTP node. I'm basically grabbing everything from Airtable. So the URL, the file type, YouTube title, caption and the platforms that I want to post to. You can see next in the switch node, it's gonna decide which platforms are being selected. So basically from the previous node, if the platforms array contains YouTube, pass it down the YouTube route. If the platform name contains TikTok, pass it down the TikTok route and so on. Back in my Airtable database here, we can see the platforms listed right here. So these names will get passed along. And if the name equals one of these names, it follows down that specific route to post to that specific platform. So moving on down, I have a filter here just to catch some certain edge cases that may happen. It's never happened, but just in case I'm checking that the file type is a video and the platform is YouTube, that way it'll definitely post to YouTube. Same thing in here, I'm checking if it's a video and if the platform is TikTok, it will definitely post to TikTok and so on. So basic filtering just to catch some weird occasions that may come up, I haven't seen it yet, but just to catch any errors before they happen with good practice. So setting up the HTTP requests nodes, 
can be tricky if you don't know about any of this stuff. You know, we have the JSON body here. If you're looking at this and like, what is all this coding? Basically all of this stuff is set up in the service itself. So if I come over to API, I can generate the API key and I can view the docs and templates and everything I need for those API calls in the HTTP request node. So generate your API key. You'll need that to enter it into the nodes and you can view the docs right here. Cool, and we can see everything you need to get started where you can see the platforms you wanna to post to over here. And what we need for the HTTP request is the API. If you don't know anything about APIs, again, I have a bunch of tutorials up in the school community. You can check out my other YouTube videos if you want, but learning this stuff is as easy as coming in here to the API. We can see the API reference right here. And what do we wanna do? We wanna publish posts. So we can click on this. Now, learning this stuff, you don't have to know anything about it, basically. All you really have to do is copy this right here and paste it into chat GPT. Now I've built a custom GPT. I'll put the link for this in the description of this video as well. You can use this for free, take a look at it, but you can also paste these API docs straight into regular chat GPT and just have a conversation with it. Say, this is what I want to build. This is what I need to do. And it will actually build out all of this stuff for you. So this is my GPT right here. I'm going to paste in all of that document information. Just paste it into the chat right here and say, can you walk me through setting up an HTTP node step by step? Cool, so the GPT will help you with everything you need. We can see configure node parameters. First of all, we need to add that node. For the configuration, set it to post. Here's the URL, content type JSON, and here is the JSON body right here. So that's where I'm getting this right here. My text for YouTube is just really long. This is the description for the YouTube video. So this is all of my description right here, but the actual data you need is going to pop out just like that. So pretty simple to set up these HTTP request nodes once you actually know what you're looking at. So that is it guys. That is my content posting automation. I definitely recommend checking out this tool. Again, I have the link in the description. This is a total game changer when it comes to mass posting to all of your social media accounts. Shout out to Sabrina Romanov for making this tool. It is incredible. I'm having fun using it. Definitely go check it out and make sure to come back. I'm going to be making a bunch of videos like this, talking about social media posting, social media content creation, social media automation in general, and how to massively expand your numbers. So come back for more. I'll be building out this content management system. You'll be able to follow along with those videos. Guys, thanks for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the school group. You can check out the link down below and I will see you in the next video.